We do want to turn now to new video today that shows a Chinese warship nearly colliding with a U.S. destroyer off of the shores of Taiwan. Take a look at this video. Officials say the warship came within about 150 yards of the U.S. guided missile destroyer. This happened as the U.S. and Canadian navies were doing joint exercises in the Taiwan Strait. That's between China and the island of Taiwan. Now, and here's another angle of that incident. You can see the Chinese ship cutting in front of the U.S. destroyer, and the U.S. destroyer had to slow down significantly to avoid crashing here. China claims that the U.S. and Canada deliberately provoked risk after staging their joint exercise. Joining us now, Jamil Jaffer, founder and executive director of the National Security Institute. Jamil, it's always good to see you. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me, Natasha. So China says that uh, U.S. and our allies provoking Beijing with these exercises near Taiwan. There were certainly strong words aimed at the U.S. over the weekend. Do you think the U.S. is exacerbating the situation with these exercises, or are they truly necessary? These exercises are completely necessary, and they're standard, Natasha. The U.S., uh, for decades around the globe, including in the Taiwan, on straits, but elsewhere as well, has conducted what are called freedom of navigation exercises. These are exercises uh, demonstrating that U.S. destroyers, uh, U.S. naval vessels, and civilian ships can transit any international body of water uh, with permission under, under international law. And so it's important to do these exercises so we can ensure that the huge amount of goods that flows through the South China Sea and the Taiwan Straits is allowed to flow continuously without interference, uh, like what we saw today or yesterday from this uh, Chinese naval vessel. You know, Chinese defense minister said that a conflict with the U.S. would be, quote, unbearable disaster. Can you elaborate what that could look like for the U.S. and how it would affect everyday Americans? Well, look, I think it's certainly true that a conflict with the Chinese uh, would be disastrous for both nations involved and would be hugely problematic. Nobody wants that. There's about three to five trillion dollars of trade that goes through the South China Sea, a significant portion of that uh, between our allies and China and between us and China. And so it's important that we not get in a conflict. At the same time, it's the Chinese a naval vessel that cut off a, a perfectly acceptable freedom of navigation exercise. It's the same thing that happened just about a week ago where we had a U.S. reconnaissance plane flying in over international waters intercepted by a Chinese J-16 jet conducting very dangerous maneuvers in front of it. So this is the Chinese raising tensions, not the United States. We're conducting normal operations in international airspace and in international waters. You know, some Republicans right now are criticizing the Biden administration for trying to have meetings with uh, Chinese officials. Do you think that criticism is fair? And, and what should the Biden administration be doing um, that they're not doing right now? Well, look, at a minimum, the Biden administration should continue to keep the pressure up on China. Uh, they've done so by conducting these freedom of navigation exercises. At the same time, there is some discussion about lightening up sanctions on certain leaders in China, including potentially the defense minister uh, who was sanctioned back in 2018. I think congressional Republicans are right to say, look, we don't want to reduce pressure on China. At the same time, it does make sense to have bilateral dialogue. President Reagan uh, did that with the Soviets in the 1980s. There's nothing wrong with that. But again, we have to be very realistic about what we can and cannot work with China on. This idea somehow that we can cooperate with them on climate change, but also confront them on other areas is simply not realistic. The reality is that we need to look at China for what it is, which unfortunately today, the Chinese Communist Party, an adversary. Okay. Jamil Jaffer, always appreciate your time. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.